Hello everyone. I hope all are keeping fine. In today's video, we are going to learn the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient of a polynomial. That is for a linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial and a cubic polynomial. Once again, I welcome you all to your own channel, Noble Mathematics. We'll find a way or make one. First of all, we are going to learn the relationship between the coefficients and the zeros of a linear polynomial. You know that the standard form of a linear polynomial is p of x is equal to ax plus b where a and b are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. You know that a linear polynomial can have at most one zero. Here, the zero of the linear polynomial is given directly by a simple formula x is equal to minus b by a, where b is the coefficient constant term and a is the coefficient of x. So, this is the only relation between the zero and the coefficients of a linear polynomial. Let us consider an example. Here, polynomial p of x is equal to 2x minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to minus p by a. That is equal to minus. b means, comparing to the standard form, b means uh, the constant term. Here, the constant term is minus 3. So, minus of minus 3 divided by a means the coefficient of x here the coefficient coefficient of x is 2 minus minus will be plus so 3 by 2 that is this is the only zero or root of the linear polynomial 2x minus 3 if you substitute x is equal to 3 by 2 in this polynomial the value will become 0 let us check that also. Substitute x is equal to 3 by 2 in 2x minus 3 gives 2 into in place of x we substitute 3 by 2 minus 3 2 and 2 get cancelled what is left 3 minus 3 which is equal to 0 that is why x is equal to 3 by 2 is called the zero of the polynomial or root of the polynomial. So, what is the relationship between the zero and the coefficients of a linear polynomial? The zero of a linear polynomial x is equal to minus b by a. Now, we will see the quadratic polynomial. You know what is the standard form of a quadratic polynomial? The standard form of a quadratic polynomial is p of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c where a, b, c are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. You know that a quadratic polynomial can have at most two zeros. Let alpha and beta be the two zeros. If alpha and beta are the two zeros of the polynomial p of x, then we can make a two relation between the zeros of the polynomial and the coefficients. The first one is sum of zeros. I use capital S for representing sum of zeros. Sum of zeros s is equal to minus b by a. Minus b by a means so here you can see b is the coefficient of x and a is the coefficient of x square. Second relation is product of zeros. I use capital P 
for representing the product of zeros and it is given by c by e that is sum of zeros sum of zeros means if alpha and beta are the two zeros sum of zeros means uh, alpha plus beta and the product of zeros means uh, alpha into beta so we can say that if alpha and beta are the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial then sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta is minus b by a and the product of zeros that is alpha into beta is c by a let us consider an example and verify the relation between the coefficients and the zeros of a quadratic polynomial here we consider a quadratic polynomial p of x is equal to x square minus 2x minus 8 you know that a quadratic polynomial can have at most two zeros to find the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial we equate the quadratic polynomial to zero that is let x square minus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero now to find the two zeros of the quadratic polynomial we have to use factorization method that means if a quadratic polynomial has two distinct zeros, we know that it can be factorized into two distinct factors. Here we are going to factorize this quadratic polynomial and we will get two factors and from the two factors we can get to the two zeros of the polynomial. So here on factorizing, for factorization I use the splitting the middle term. The middle term minus 2x is split as minus 4x plus 2x you know that minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2x so we have x square minus 4x plus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0 grouping these two and these two terms and I take x from the first two terms common and 2 from the last two terms common we get x into x minus 4 plus 2 into x minus 4 is equal to 0 Again, you can see x minus 4 is common. Now, x minus 4 is taken common, and the remaining terms, that is x plus 2, are put in the bracket. So, we get x minus 4 into x plus 2 is equal to 0. So, these are the two factors of this quadratic polynomial. These two factors are two distinct factors. So, we can understand that the two zeros of this polynomial are distinct x minus 4 into x plus 2 is equal to 0 therefore x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0 here you know that the product of two quantities can be equal to 0 product of two quantities means x minus 4 into x plus 2 can be equal to 0 only if one of these two quantities that is one of x one of this x minus 4 or x plus 2 is 0. So we can assume that x minus 4 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. If x minus 4 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 4. And if uh, x plus 2 is equal to 0, then x is equal to minus 2. So the two zeros of this quadratic polynomial are 4 or minus 2. If alpha and beta are the two zeros of the quadratic polynomial, here I assume alpha is equal to 4 and beta is equal to minus 2. First I take the sum of the zeros that is alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta is equal to 4 plus minus 2. 4 plus minus 2 is equal to 2. By the relation between the zeros and the coefficients we have alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a. So I am going to find the sum of zeros by using this formula also. Now alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a which is equal to minus the value of b is a minus 2 comparing with the standard form of a quadratic polynomial here a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 2 and c is equal to minus 8. So minus b by a means minus of minus 2 by 1 minus minus plus 2 by 1 is equal to 2. Second, product of zeros, alpha into beta is obtained by multiplying 4 into minus 2. 4 into minus 2 is equal to minus 8. By the relation we have, 
product of zeros alpha into beta is c by a so i am going to find out the product of the zero by using this relation also now alpha into beta is equal to c by a here the value of c is a minus 8 so minus 8 by 1 the value of a is a 1 so minus 8 by 1 which is equal to minus 8 so in this question in this example question we calculated the two zeros and we multiplied them and we added them we got the sum of the zeros and the product of the zeros by direct calculation and also we used the relationship between the coefficients and the zeros of a polynomial by that relation also we got the same value therefore verified now we are going to see how to form a quadratic polynomial if the two zeros of a quadratic polynomial are given or their sum and product are given here we assume that alpha and beta are the zeros of a quadratic polynomial then sum of the zeros is equal to alpha plus beta and the product of the zeros is equal to alpha into beta if you have the sum and the product of the zeros of a quadratic polynomial then we can write the quadratic polynomial p of x by the following formula now the polynomial p of x is given by k into x square minus sx s is the sum of the zeros plus p p is the product of zeros that is k into x square minus alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta here what is k if a polynomial is multiplied by any real number then the value of the two zeros will never change therefore a polynomial can be multiplied by any number so that number is represented by k for example let us see the previous polynomial in the previous example the polynomial we have considered is x square minus 2x minus 8 to find the zeros we equate it with the zero x square minus 8 is equal to zero on factorization by splitting the middle term we got the zeros of this polynomial as x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 2 these are the two zeros we obtained here if you multiply this polynomial by any real number that is if you multiply this polynomial by 8 then also the zeros of the polynomial will be x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 2 that is why for a polynomial there can be any value in place of k therefore whenever you form a quadratic polynomial give a provision for any real number and that is represented by k see the question form a quadratic polynomial whose sum and product of zeros are root 2 and 1 by 3 respectively here the sum of the zeros is root 2 and the product of the zeros is 1 by 3 so the sum is denoted by s and the product is denoted by p Here s is equal to root two and p is equal to one by three. Therefore, quadratic polynomial p of x is equal to k into x square minus s x plus p, which is equal to k into x square minus the value of s, that is sum of zeros, is root two. x plus product of zeros is 1 by 3 so value of p is uh, 1 by 3 so this is the quadratic polynomial so if you are given the two zeros separately find the sum and the product then write the polynomial if the sum and the product are given directly you can write 
the polynomial directly. So this is about how to form a quadratic polynomial. The third one is cubic polynomial. The standard form of a cubic polynomial is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus b where a, b, c and d are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. Whenever I write the standard form of a polynomial, you have noticed that everywhere I have written a is not equal to 0. Here also I have written a is not equal to 0. Can you tell me what happens if a is equal to 0? If a is equal to 0, then this term that is a x cube term will be 0 into x cube which becomes 0. As a result, the whole polynomial becomes a quadratic polynomial. That is why whenever you write the standard form of a quadratic polynomial, the coefficient of the highest degree term should not be equal to 0. So that is why I have written a is not equal to 0. You know that a cubic polynomial can have at most three zeros. Let us represent these three zeros by alpha, beta and gamma. Let alpha, beta and gamma be the zeros. Now we have three relations between the coefficients and the zeros of the cubic polynomial. First one is the sum of zeros alpha plus beta plus gamma is given by minus b by a. Minus b by a means a minus b is the coefficient of second term that is a x square term divided by a is the coefficient of a first term that is x cube. The second relation is sum of product of two zeros at a time. Sum of product of two zeros that is alpha into beta plus beta into gamma plus gamma into alpha that is c by a. Here c is the coefficient of third term that is x term by a is the coefficient of first term that is x cube. The third relation is alpha into beta into gamma that is the product of the three zeros that is given by minus d by a. Here d is the constant term and a is the coefficient of the first term. So these are the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients of a cubic polynomial. The examples and the questions related to cubic polynomials we will do in some other occasion. So I hope you understood the relationship between the coefficients and the zeros of a linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial and the cubic polynomial. Also, I have explained how to form a quadratic polynomial when the two zeros or the sum and the product of the two zeros are given. I hope today's video is very useful for all of you.